Um, so in this video, I'll show you the uh, wildcard application segment and how to intercept all traffic on, on vSCADA private access. Um, so relatively simple um, configuration here. Uh, I've got an application segment, um, I've called it wild. It's associated with a specific server group, in this case, my one in AWS. Um, and I just have star as the application segment name. Note, it's not star dot star, it is just star. Uh, and then for this, I have uh, TCP port 165535, UDP port 165535. Uh, um, and obviously it's gonna remind me about um, port 53. We don't need to worry about that because we don't have an IP configuration. So we're gonna click continue. We're gonna click save and we're good. Now, uh, as I said, this is associated with um, a connector uh, group, which is AWS. I can see AWS here. Um, and uh, the IP address is 35.155.162.38. Um, so anything that's uh, a wildcard, anything that matches that wildcard will get tunneled over ZPA and egress with that source IP address. So I'm going to start with Windows here. Um, I've got um, Zscaler app running. Uh, it's a specific version of Zscaler app that is needed for um, for this functionality to work. Um, now, in this example, I've got internet access and private access running. I'm actually going to come in here. I'm going to turn off uh, internet access because the use case for this is internet access isn't running. Uh, if it was, you wouldn't need star dot star over uh, over Zscaler private access because private access would take your private traffic. And internet traffic access would take everything else. Uh, so this use case is a uh, ideally a customer who cannot use or does not use Zscaler internet access, but still needs kind of uh, inverted commas full tunnel uh, VPN kind of uh, capability. So um, this should all just work. If I um, I'll actually do it from a command prompt, so you can see what's going on. Um, to come in here, curl HTTP IP.zscaler.com and press enter. Um, and we'll scroll up here and we can see the IP address that it's come from 35.155.162.38. So that's the IP address of the connector. If I go to my, uh, my Mac here and I go IP.zscaler.com, uh, my real IP is 81.159. 64.131. Now, that's kind of fine when it's uh, when it's an FQDN, um, and you know I can uh, I can't dig it's Windows. Uh, let's look up uh, ip.zscaler.com, and you can see what happens. Uh, it gets resolved to uh, a 164 address as you'd expect. It becomes an application segment. Um, but we can do some interesting things here. We could go to ip.zscaler.com. Uh, and we can actually resolve it over the internet. We know it's 72, 52, 96.15. So let's um, let's do this, let's curl that. But instead of going to that, we can say, let's resolve uh, ip.zscaler.com port 80 to that real IP address. And what's gonna happen here, if we look, we see it now comes out with um, my, sort, my, my real source address. And the reason is we've said, don't resolve it to the, uh, let, let the, the uh, Zscaler app intercept and resolve it and return a 164 address. Uh, let's actually give it the specific IP address, uh, 52, 250, uh, 50, 72.52.96.15. Remember this is an application segment to tunnel. It doesn't um, provide IP based routing into the tunnel. Uh, and let's start minus RN. We, we know that the default route is the gateway. Um, it's only those 164 addresses, which is that stub adapter that, that would then get uh, intercepted at the, the, the uh, end disk kind of level. So, you know, obviously you need to be really careful on how this is positioned. Um, it doesn't provide like for like IP based um, connectivity like a VPN. Um, so what can we do? Uh, well, we can come in here and we can say, well, actually, uh, ideally, you'd want to create an application segment and let's go 
uh, root, uh, let's call it root, and we'll go 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0, uh, 1, 6, uh, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5, 1, 5, 3, 5. Turn that off. Next. Uh, let's go, let's just go off and configure this and show you what will happen. All good. Ah, oh, we don't allow zero, 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 zero slash zero. Um, so it's not permitted, which, you know, is, is, is fine. Um, but what we can do is we can create uh, every single slash eight um, that exists. So I've uh, gone ahead and created all of those. Um, I will tell you that I manually created all of those. Uh, it took me a couple of minutes, but uh, a bit of copy and pasting. Um, but it's all in there. So um, let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll edit that a second. We'll enable that. Click next, next, I'll continue. We'll save that. Um, but we also need to add some explicit bypasses. Um, and so those would be your RFC 1918 addresses, as well as the uh, carry grade NAT ranges. Um, and we specifically want to bypass those. Um, and otherwise, we end up in a bit of a routine loop with this one. And this one causes problems with um, the DNS resolution. And of course, that needs to be catered for in the customer environment as well. So let's click next and save on that. Um, and so if I come across now to, to my client and do a, uh, we should probably need to do a bit of an update policy in here. Um, hmm. I would expect to then see those routes, but let's, uh, let's try that uh, request again there. And you can see now, that 35, 155, 162.38, uh, we're back to the IP address being the, the IP address of the connector. So it's now actually intercepted this 72.52, uh, 96.15 as, as an application segment. And we can we could see that in the, in the logs. Uh, see, in fact, probably the easiest way to see it. Um, so if we come into the diagnostics and we can see there it was a connection to 72.52.96.15 that got intercepted. Um, the actual curl um, gave it the um, gave it the host header, which is then posted as part of the request to the to the to the web server. So that's essentially what happened there. So so that's the way you get this this kind of stuff working. If you wanted to do those those routes, I'm sure we're going to have to do something a bit uh, a bit more sensible. Um, on that and we we may even need to bypass some zscaler ip ranges uh i can see there 165 225 196 uh 22 that's probably the london uh the london node um i would imagine but you can start to see all the other traffic going in there um obviously there's a prioritization anything uh, as you'd expect specific uh, app segments or more specific wildcards will take precedence over the star wildcard. Um, and so whilst we're doing this, let's, uh, let's actually open up uh, Zscaler on, um, on my Mac and show you exactly the same thing. And we'll turn off uh, Zscaler internet security there. Private access, you can see again, the right version uh, that is necessary for this. Um, so if I uh, open up terminal window here now mac behaves differently it's more root mode so you can see that all those roots get them propagated down uh, we can do our curl httpip.zscaler.com um, and you can see it comes out with that ip address um, we do minus V for both. You should be able to see. It's a little bit slower. Hmm. 
there we go. Um, now in this case, it resolved it to 72, uh, 52.96.15, which is interesting. And so let's uh, just check that DNSSD, that's gv4 ip.zscaler.com. And this probably indicates that I've got some kind of routing problem um, going on within uh, within this there 192 slash 8 is still included in the IP range which is what's caused the problem um, so let's take a look at that uh, application segment Oh, no, I tell a lie. Uh, 192.168. See, all of these should be going direct. Uh, I think I've got an application segment for 1.2 specifically, and that's why it's picked it up. Let me um, just check that. This one should be disabled. Ah, here it is. I forgot to re-enable that one. That's the reason. So we need to enable that bypass for those local addresses. And that's what's causing my problem. So now we can see that range specifically defined to bypass. So now when I do the DNS SD, I get the real IP address. Now when I do the minus V, I get the 164 address, which should pass it through ZPA. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to restart the service and double check everything's uh, connected properly. Uh, the wildcard is there. The wild bypass over overrides those routes, so we should be good. Let's double check this. Is uh, there we go. Oh. There we go, right. Okay, so we go to the IP address, uh, sorry, the FQDN, and it's resolving fine to that. That's the source IP address the request saw. Um, and from a client side perspective, it resolved to 164.1.11. If we now do that, uh, minus minus resolve ip.zscaler.com port 80 and we want to resolve it to that IP address. You can see that it's, uh, let's um, scroll up here. Um, there we go. 
Um, so you can see it tried that IP, it connected to that IP, but it's still seeing this source IP because it's rooted through Zscaler. So slightly different behavior between a Mac and a Windows device, but ultimately, you know, the, the wildcard star will capture any FQDN, but it doesn't capture anything accessed by an IP address. So that may be the differentiator. That's maybe the thing that uh, customers are, might, might end up being concerned about. FQDNs coming into the tunnel, anything going via uh, uh, an IP address would bypass the tunnel. You'd need to include those IP address ranges. You need to specifically exclude RFC 1918 for things like DNS to actually work properly. Um, or not, depending on how the coffee, you know, coffee shop, working from home scenario. Um, the other thing to consider is uh, obviously you need to bypass the 164 address range, otherwise you end up in a routing loop locally on the client. Um, hope this helps. Uh, let me know, mark at zscaler.com.